Um, so the title of this panel is Shit Gets Real. And the intention was for us to sit down and bitch about aspects of web comics that none of us like. The person who actually came up with the panel is dead sick. So we can talk shit about him for mm -hmm. an entire hour. Um, um, actually, let's start with a moment of silence for Ross Nover. That's enough. Like, <laughs> just, just, just a moment, man. And uh, because this panel is getting recorded, and because web comics is like fifth grade uh, recess, um, I think, for safety's sake, some of us may not name names. Yeah. Some of us may name names. Like, it depends on how much we want to burn that bridge type well, of thing. So yeah. You just have to be clever about it. Right. You know, we can draw symbols. <laughs> Like I knew this one guy. He did a comic called Dueling Analogs. <laughs> like, dude's See, right complete the, ass. See, if you're right there, you've already proven that you're wrong because it means that they actually did something, and uh, you've already proven that to be false. <laughs> Do not trust this man. He's a liar. <laughs> so, so to some extent, let's uh, pretend a amount of non-disclosure. Like, let's not try to play guess who we're actually talking about. Uh, or go running to people and like, oh gosh, you said them because we'll deny it. <laughs> oh, it totally didn't happen. We should probably introduce ourselves. Okay, I'm Dern. Um, I might write web comics. Like, I, I kind of want to go as like as little credit as possible now. It's like <laughs> my last panel, I'm like, I do this board game and I write this comic for Dungeons and Dragons and I write this comic and this and I'm awesome. No, nah, I'm Dern. You can find me on the internet. <laughs> uh, I'm Jamie Naguti. I do a comic as well. <laughs> is this what we're doing? We're slowly going down? Yeah. Or it's my turn? Yo. <laughs> <laughs> He's Nordic. <laughs> he is quite tall. <laughs> so basically, the guy who also was planning on moderating this panel is dead. Um, what about Bree? Isn't she on this panel? Hmm? Oh, I think Bree might be coming, yeah. Did we forget to grab Bree? Uh, I'm not sure. Does Bree have a table here? Yeah, uh, I, I think so. so. I don't know, man. Dude, she came in late like, I know. yesterday. Yeah, that's true. Mm. So, yeah, webcomic creators, they're, they're really, like, lazy and they show up late. <laughs> All right, so we need to kick this off somehow. Yeah. First off, does anybody have any questions? Like, we can throw to questions really, really early if you want, but uh, otherwise it's probably just going to be us telling stories about, uh, like, webcomics very much is like high school in that there's a bunch of little clicks and like the personalities are so freaking annoying half the time like those assholes who slap microphones while they're talking to them <laughs> yeah all right well um all right what or who you don't have to name names who has pissed you off the most uh with something they've ever either done in their comic or something that they've done to you as a creator. You're asking me, or I'm hoping them. I want some of them to point at me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Um, I'm wondering, you know, when you guys do web comics, do you ever have problems that the server can go to in the process? Yes. Mm. Dreamhouse sucks. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. No, seriously. They, uh, so, you know, because we had the net neutrality panel, um, talking about uh, um, unlimited bandwidth. So we had the net neutrality panel talking about unlimited bandwidth. No, all right. And it's not really unlimited because uh, DreamHost kept cutting off my site. Oh. Like, it's like, oh, you're getting too much thing. It's like, well, then open the pipe. It's like, no, no, no. It's like, but it's unlimited. Yeah, but it's unlimited to a point. Then it's so, not unlimited. So what I had to do is now I have to have image or caching on Amazon to handle my site. So Shit. I used to be spending uh, $98 a year for DreamHost. That was great. Now I have to spend $50 a month with DreamHost. So now we've already gone the increase. Now we're at $600 a year um, just wow. to keep it on DreamHost. And then I spend another $150, $200 a month with Amazon so that they can transfer the files because I do about, I think it's somewhere between a half to uh, three quarters of a terabyte of file transfers a month. Oh my God. So. I have to pay for that. I hate you, Steve Napierski. Yeah, well, well then <laughs> you can pay for it. <laughs> no, but no, I mean... for the numbers that you're doing. Those are... Well, you get the... It's like, hey, look, you know, the people on Reddit like your comic. Great. Doesn't link to my site. Links to my uh, caching server. So I'm paying 
all that money for that thing on Reddit. So I was like, yeah. Uh, I you just know. ran into a topic that we could actually talk about real quick that is completely like it is hands down the most hate driving thing for me is when people take my comic, scratch out, cut off, crop out the credit. And then post it elsewhere with their own watermark on it. Oh, like fuck. it's it's the complete spectrum of how to piss me off. Like the good side over here, uh, we'll put it over here. Is um, <laughs> these guys aren't good. <laughs> They're bad, bad people. Um, <laughs> the good side is like you repost my comic and you post it with a link and you say this comic is awesome. Go to the site and check it out. <laughs> and the bad side of it is when it. At some point, it's like you post it and you don't link it. Or then you post it and you take the credit off. And then the final, ultimate <laughs> side of it, which that is actually the one that had it happen to the most, which yeah. befuddled me because I put the credit in the middle of the comic. So they actually had to actively crop it into two pieces, smoosh it together. <laughs> yeah. I knew that was the one, man. Yeah. That was awesome. Did, did you actually repost that? No, 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 dude. Okay. If I, I was like, I saw something that Caldy did that made it on there, and it wasn't his mm -hmm. art style. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was with the boo, where it was the boo versus the silent. Oh, yeah, I yeah. Mean, with the angel, the angel and the boo, and yeah. they're looking at each other. Yeah. And I thought it was awesome. I reposted it, because it didn't, you know, and I didn't know he did it, and I found out he did. So, of course, you know, I'm, all the credit's on there, yeah. everything yeah, I put on Yeah, you're really there. good about that. I mean, you actually I wanna, do some digging on it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if I find somebody's artwork on there, and it doesn't have something, I look for it. And then if I don't know, I even post in there that I don't know, and then the people will usually, somebody will know, like, hey, this was so-and-so. I was like, okay, so I give credit back for it. Yeah, yeah. whereas so. it was, uh, it, with mine, it, like, if you Google search, you have died of dissing Terry, it actually, mine is, like, the first three hits, because it's me, it's my store, and then it's my Tumblr. And, and, and like, I use Tumblr as, like, an offensive <laughs> attack. Like, I go and I search Tumblr to find my stuff, and then I just use my Tumblr to retumble stuff that people have tumbled of my stuff. Hey, I saw this so is So it's like this tumble cycle. Like, yeah, I do remember when I made that comic. I am a funny bastard. Thank you. <laughs> but okay, okay. I, I'm going to do a visual demonstration here because there was this one site. Um, it was called 9Gag. Dude, 9Gag is awesome. No, 9Gag is not awesome. 9Gag is you not why. awesome. 9Gag licks donkey screw. Like, let's say this is their screen, right? <laughs> and they'll post your comic right here. I can't prove it. And they're like, oh, check it out, you know, dysentery right there. Oh, it's funny, ha ha, it's funny. And it's, here will be their little header up here. Here, 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 here. It's going to be a bunch of like, basically, they are clicks away pieces. They are, they're, they're, they're buttons that look at other things on the site. Here, here, here is going to be a list of headlines. Here, here, here more ways to click to go deeper into 9gag away from this. Here, 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 more clicks. You scroll down to the next part of the page, another set of photos, little tiny text link. That's them helping you. <laughs> so when I talk about like, oh hey, it's awesome when you take my art and put it on your site and link it to me, but did they take do the, that shit and I'll tell you to take it the fuck off your site. Did they take the, um, your, um, Copyright information off it. Uh, Do you have a watermark on no, it? They left. They left. They did not alter it in any way. But actually, here's the thing: if you're a Creative Commons comic, I could not tell them to take that off mm. because they are actually using it within the lines of Creative Commons. I have not surrendered my copyright on my comics, so technically nobody is allowed to repost it without my permission. I give a blanket permission, saying, you know, if you're basically not a dick, go ahead and repost it and link it. That's why I'm not allowed to repost this stuff. Aww, yeah, poor Steve. That was a trick question I was asking if you posted it earlier. <laughs> yeah, I was like, take it down now. But uh, what? So they have all these exit points on their site, and the, in other sites like StumbleUpon takes you straight to the site. Reddit, you basically have to go straight to the site. I'm gonna keep slapping that mic. Um, <laughs> Other times you'll have things where they'll link it and they, the image itself is a link straight to the site. I love those because mm. you can find those right away and it takes you straight to the site, which is where we need people to go for us to make money. Um, but that, that little tiny link on the bottom, that's not helping us at all. Like they had that on their front page and it was the hot click thing and 
it had like 10,000 comments on it, like little thumbs ups and likes and all that stuff. They're bragging about it, 10,000 people. And that's only the ones that decided to interact with it, not the ones that looked at it. I actually bothered to go through my Google Analytics because it was a very busy week when that first came out. Nine, nine hits. That's how many people went all the way down the little tiny link, clicked it, found my site. Okay. Similar thing, but was when I did uh, um, Pac-Man, how it really happened. Mm -hmm. Reddit got it. Number one on gaming for about, it really was like a day and change up there. Number one in gaming, like straight to the image on my image cache and server. Oh, the file is about, I think it's 350, 400K for oh. the file. It was viewed, I believe it's 200,000 times. So multiply oh those two God. together. Um, and mm -hmm. I had to pay for that. Yeah. And, yeah. And I went on there and I was like, look, it's like, you know, and I, and I was on there and the guy was like, he was, somebody complains like, dude, you're stealing this bandwidth. And the guy's yeah. like, I wasn't stealing bandwidth. You know, it's blah, blah, blah. And I came on there. I was like, yeah. look, I appreciate you liking the comic. I really do. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, you are. And I explained how image caching worked. And uh, he apologized and everything and stuff. I was like, that's cool, man. You know, it's just, this is how it works. You know, if you're going to do this, then throw it on in, or Imgur, yeah, uh, yeah. whatever, because that's a... Uh, I think they're connected with Reddit anyway. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's like, look. Personally, I hate it when they put it on a major. That's. Well, I'd rather they bad, do that yeah. than steal it and make yeah. me pay for it. At least that's I'm, a fucking huge chunk of change. Because you would have taken two hundred thousand links to the site, no yeah. problem. Oh, that would have been awesome, man. Uh, to clarify, anybody, if we might have skipped a step there, uh, the way most web comics are set up is that we have our site, we have our blog, we have links to our store, basically ways to encourage you to become a permanent fan. Uh, and our webcomic always posts the image with that. And the image is its own separate file, and yes, there are ways to open up the image link by itself. So all you're looking at is just the image. And that's what we give away for free, but we give away it for free with the basically the understanding that you're gonna look at all that other pretty stuff that we give you. Basically, the stuff that pisses me off about 9gag, when I'm doing it for my own site, I'm 100% okay with it because well, let's face it, I actually, that's my work in the middle, so I have the right to do that. Mm -hmm. When somebody else does that with my work, I get ticked off about it. Yeah. And, and with like, yeah. for me, most of my revenue from the comics come from ads. So the way like- You need those hits. Yeah, so with Google, you don't make money unless you do 1,000 views of something. So every 1,000 views is when you get paid out for a certain amount. So if it's, you're making, uh, you know, 50 cents per 1,000 views, you know, and people are taking away 100 or 200,000 views away from you, you know, you think that's where the chunk of the money comes from. So it's like, yeah. That's like, straight up, is, am I doing the math right? Is that $1,000? If it was a, um, if it was a dollar. $100? $100 for 1,000. Carried the zero a little too yeah. far. So. But that's also based on the idea that it's one dollar per one thousand. Right. I don't have that problem because my strip is in a gag a day, so. Dude, they, they work. <laughs> you don't get the, the people who come in are willing to they go in and out the door more frequently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But because you can start at any point in the thing in there, it's like oh, oh, oh he thinks abortion's funny. You know, they come in at that <laughs> point, and then you might abortion. keep them for a while. Then they come back and ah, oh, you made another abortion joke. Yay. Oh, man. One of the things that I absolutely hate is like people who like look down on the gag a day and they're like, you know, what the hell? I'm jealous of the gag a day because <laughs> you motherfuckers have traffic like a motherfucker. Dude, hookers make money off the gag a day. <laughs> <laughs> Put that in hello with cheese. Hello no. with yummy. No, no, no. Oh, oh nice. Then we have material for tonight. Enough. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, one of the things I fucking can't stand is people who ha whose sites have like massive amounts of traffic and they never fucking update. And then they go on and then they, they profess to teach other people how to do comics. And I'm like, you don't do your own fucking comic and you're teaching other people how to do fucking comics. Okay, well, first off, you're doing it wrong with your comic. Well, let me explain this to you. <laughs> now, uh, now. I hate it when I do that. I hate it when I tell people to update their comic and I never update my comic. 
Fucking hate that. Dude, you are you're you're good about updating your comic, man. Yes. Problem so, is, I know exactly who he's talking about I, at I the know. moment because he it's it's a topic that has been very very sore for us. It's it, it's very hard when doing a web comic to not hate on somebody's success. Yes. Because your professional jealousy. The whole thing, like I try to tell people this over and over again on like how to is like don't pay attention to your numbers. Just just make a good comic. Have fun while you're doing it. Do it as a hobby for a while. Then try to do it professionally. Don't worry about the numbers. And yet, I'm pretty sure I checked my numbers about four times today. Um, because, hey, I got a smartphone, yeah, check that out. Well, because part of the business model is a numbers game. Like, the more yeah. views you get, if part of your business model mm -hmm. de depends on ad revenue and he phone calls. He just got calls, a new reader. It's just a, it's a very, very, like, it, as soon as somebody clicks 10 pages at once at his thing, it sets it off. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, yeah. holy shit, this I'm checking my numbers right and, now. And then, <laughs> And it, look, there are, there are some comics out there that they were done just as a hobby. Um, I was thinking of uh, Gone with the Blast Wave the other day, and I don't know if anyone's oh, ever man, saw I that one. That again. one is a sad, sad story because the dude just enjoyed oh, doing it, got great traffic, and the traffic made it so he never wanted to do it again. Oh, because they were like, dude, keep making updates. Give us our update. Why won't you oh, update? Jesus Christ. And he's like, I was doing it for fun. <laughs> Sorry, Steve just showed me his numbers. <laughs> It's got a little erection right there. You see that? <laughs> Wait. Why do you got an erection right now? What well, bam. His numbers have an what erection. You? you know why? <laughs> it's because I spent 20 minutes creating a comic in a news post. Yeah. I hate it when he does that. Oh, that's just a news post? No, I did a, I did a comic. He did a comic in 20 fucking minutes. I did five minutes to draw the comic, five minutes to come up with the idea, and ten minutes to actually write the post. Did it right before he left for the convention. It is crappy artwork. It's a simple joke. And, uh, man, this is awesome. I'm, I'm going to speak really quickly for O, who is my, my partner, O, who is not here because I, I, you know, export his ass to South America. Um, <laughs> what? He lives there. You're a job creator, Darren. I'm a job creator for the world. I mean, come on, he's talented. What, Why are you whatever? outsourcing web comics? <laughs> because, like, yeah, That's not American. <laughs> I'm, well, technically, he is American. Oh, yes. Ain't my time American. He ain't a, a United States American. He's ah. a South American. But anyhow, a US <laughs> the thing that he hates the most is this weird knack of our comic. Like, every now and then, uh, the joke maintains that he needs to do a different art style. And whenever he goes completely away from his art style and is mimicking something, those tend to be our biggest comics. And he's a ridiculously talented artist, but if he draws, like, a 16-bit organ trail joke, it shows up on 9-gag and dueling analog. I, oh, okay. you actually did spell that right. Okay. It was... No, no, you didn't. <laughs> you know, this is a cool thing. Hold on. It's dual nug and in laws. <laughs> dual nug. <laughs> dual nug. No, uh, no, you, you live your with hand. your mistakes. No, oh, there it is. There it is. Hogs. Yes. <laughs> we're we're slowly developing material for our art fight show later tonight. Okay. So super art fight unleashed. When you, you know. huh? I did. It's his fault. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's cool, man. Thank you. So, do we actually have to admit to what comics we do at this point? Yeah. Yeah. I do a uh, life with fishnets. Ah. I've been updating it regularly for before the internet was created. Uh, oh, I'm a recovering artist. Uh, Son of a bitch. Yeah, I do XKCD. <laughs> Prove me wrong. I do. I do Penny Arcade. <laughs> His left nut is Gabe, his right nut is Tycho. Exactly. <laughs> you guys have been just doing the And then it's Robert Coe right in the middle. <laughs> right in the middle. That's the <laughs> con part. Dude, without him, he is what made them successful. That's true. I mean, that got an awesome thing, but it. Okay. they didn't know how to run business. Like, we, on the, on I, the, I feel like we're not getting hateful enough. Okay, so let, let, let's talk about it. We were close to it with the... <laughs> we were, we're getting there with that hating on the success thing. What I'm really getting tired of is... Every now and then you get some of the old timer comicers that they started their comic in 99 and they probably started on somebody else's site. 
And somehow these are the positions of authority telling us how to start a comic from scratch. Mm. And none of them have ever actually done it. Like anything that predates like 2001, there's a very good chance they didn't build their own website, put their comic up, and just build their own audience from nothing. That's and it, it's weird that way that um, sometimes you, the advice that I hear coming from people that have been in it at least 10 years is just horrendously wrong. And they get mad when people point that out to them. It's, it's very top down. It's yeah. like, well, I'm successful. This fucking worked for me. Yeah. It should work for you. But, and then they walk away from the table, and you don't yeah. get a continuation of that discussion. A, a great example, and this would be a blind item, but a, a creator at one point said, you should never do conventions when you're starting out. I believe that creator was Marty Day. Yes, it was Marty Day of uh, Dead of Summer. And uh, <laughs> yeah. he's in the back row. We know him. <laughs> I've slept with the man. It's OK. And, um, not lying, <laughs> yep. Uh, and um, as it was, it, the advice of not going to cons just made me like want to scream at them because they were like looking at it from a purely financial standpoint. And at a certain point, when you're doing cons for a really long time, you do have to do that. Mm -hmm. Like I'm looking at like 20 shows next year, and I'm realizing the year after that I have to dial back because I don't want to die, and. <laughs> I have to figure out which ones are the ones that are actually paying my payday. And they have to do that right now. Yeah. And they were thinking, well, why didn't we do this from the start? And they were only looking at shows in terms of how they made money. And I came up with this logic very early on that it was sort of, it may even have been just like a mental justification thing. Like, whenever I go to a show, I have to take something away from it. Like, sometimes I'm just stealing chairs. Um, you have a very nice chair collection. Yeah, I have a very awesome chair collection, except not these. These are kind of stiff, man. I'm going to have to leave them here. But, um, you know, it would be making friends or apparently, like, meeting these guys okay. and doing things like that. And I called them out on it and said, what the hell? Like, you guys met each other at a convention. That was the fucked up thing about it, because that group would not exist yeah. were it not for the convention. And... He comes back and says, no, we met online. We knew each other online beforehand. About two weeks later, I'm in a digital conversation with one of the other members of the group, and he was rethinking his position on conventions. He was actually rethinking his position to exactly what I was saying, that you meet people at shows and that. And he starts telling this story about how he was at this show, and he thought about it and realized that you know this was this show that he didn't want to do. And it, it, like, if he could have undone it, he would have done it. But then he thought about it for another minute and realized, that's where I met two of my best friends, including the guy who bold-faced lied to me and said, I met them all online. He fabricated an entire online connection with people so that he could be right in an argument with me. Was it the, was it the other guy in the panel at that time? Uh, they were both in the panel, yes. Dude, because if I were him, I would have looked right at you. Know? <laughs> oh no! It is. Oh. oh wait, wait. Are you talking about the guy in the panel? The that... guy who lied to you? No, no. Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, no. Are you, not, now you, what, you, are you saying about, about a history, man? Are yeah, you yeah, talking yeah. about a panel that I was in? The panel where he said that. Were you there? Hmm. Okay. We should just move on from that one. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. That one gets that one gets close. really confusing after a while. Yes. Too many dicks. Too many dicks. It's. Yeah, that's the thing that I just don't get is that a lot of times you just don't want to be an asshole in this industry, and yet so many people are. Well, there there is a thing that really pissed me off that I found out, and I guess it's because I'm childish and I should have known better. Um, but you know, when I when I started doing web comics, everybody I, I knew was like really um, very communal and happy to mm -hmm. talk to you. Like you know, I met Steve, I met Darren. They're always willing to give advice and. Um, <laughs> behind my, my back name they talk Randall. shit all the time. Um, but, you know, like, w from my perspective, web comics is a, is a very open industry. And I had done work in the comic book industry and, and people I had met there, some of them are real big assholes. And a lot of, some of them are really nice and willing to work with you. And, you know, everybody understands that everybody came from somewhere. And they, you know, keep that in mind when they're, they're working. And I, and I thought that's what the web comic community was all about. And then I found out that there was this group, this very elitist group, that, um, 
if you are not part of their circle, they will not bother to talk to you at a convention or hang out with you at a convention, or if you're on a panel with them, they will fucking ignore you the entire time. And I was like, and I guess it shattered my idealistic image of the industry because I'm an idiot, and I, and I tend to think the best of people, and yet here's this group that have a dedicated site specifically to talk shit about anybody who's not in their group. Yeah, and it's I'll, actually a secret forum. There is actually a secret forum that has a lot of webcomic creators in it that they actually coordinate it, and all they do in this forum is talk shit about other creators. Okay, I wanna. Um, mm -hmm. Disabled the web creator. Like, I wanna know who these things are. All right, we do not talk crap about everyone in that forum. I just wanna state that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, Steve. <laughs> My iPhone has a recording device for audio, so. Uh. <laughs> I doubt that. I really doubt that. I don't think they have the time for it. They are? Oh, shit. They're not active in it, but they were in that forum. Yeah, they were invited. Yeah, and, and like, and these are people that I used to, I used to follow their comics and I used to look up to them because, like, you know, they would talk about their blogs and they'd be like, oh, yeah, I've done this and blah, 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 and, and they would have really good advice and really positive things to say about people. And then you find out that they're part of this group and it's like, well, shit. I mean, like, I I want to hang out with you. I want to meet you. And, you know, I don't. But I don't want to be part of this elitist asshole group of people that you know. Yeah. Well, people? This is what we call a blind item. We won't get together later on and start Oh no, no, he's not. Yeah. No, no. But could, wouldn't that be like kind of like the irony yeah. that he was? That would be hilarious yeah. irony. But nobody likes that guy. Yeah. <laughs> like. Oh, dude, we got text messaging. Oh, we do. Oh, dude. Hey, everybody, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, okay, let, let's. It, ultimately, this is the lesson that I learned because I hate like, I hate hating on things and then not like doing anything about it. Like, so I always like whenever I'm in an argument, I'll have that moment where I'll stop, I'll look at the yeah, argument and say, okay. No, this we'll is why we're fighting. We'll we're we'll probably not going to fix this, but let's try to do we'll this at fight. least to try to bridge yeah, that over and move on. Um, as annoyed as I am that there is this secret society of haters, Come on. like I really picture the Dave Chappelle uh, sketch of the Haters Society, the Haters Ball, just walking around, <laughs> <laughs> like your webcomic is weak. You'll never be as big as us. Weak, and motherfucker, if weak. <laughs> if it gets bigger than us, we're going to pretend it's not actually a webcomic. I've actually seen them do that. Um, but yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. Um, I know what that is. Um, there's a webcomic out there called The Oatmeal. The Oatmeal. Which, Dude, yeah. I've never met the guy. All I know is, is his comic is damn funny. Dude, he and he's, he, he maybe knows yes, SEO way amazing. better yeah. than any other webcomic out there. And he's been able to leverage that into a lot of traffic on his site. He is probably, huh? Uh, search, search engine, engine optimization. optimization. Yes. Also, if you want to find out what SEO is, just type it into Twitter. Watch how many spam bots just yeah, yeah. on you. <laughs> you will be followed like by everybody. Word. It's like, I am an SEO expert because I follow 3,000 people on Twitter well, and 2,000 of them have followed me back. Well, because because his comic is so successful at, at doing this and yeah. he doesn't have continual storylines, he doesn't have characters, and he doesn't necessarily have jokes, yeah. people have called him out on, on the carpet for not doing a comic. They have said yeah. that like the oatmeal is not a comic. It's bullshit if you call it a comic. And fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can't just call it. It's a freaking comic. It's like it's top ten or top nine lists or things about cats or things like that. Yeah, and, and people. Oh, trust and me, you've, you've seen. If you've been on the internet. Seen you've it. seen it. Yeah. Now. Yeah, and people. It's very well read, and you can't redefine what a comic is just because somebody without your without your secret society support network went and passed you. And that's the thing about the internet is that. There are so many readers out there that if... Can we call them the stonecutters? The, stone the stonecutters, stone yes. He doesn't write a comic? No, no, no. no the guy does. with the old man, he writes and creates his own comic. Oh, okay. It is a comic if you're not stuck up. Oh, okay. If you're stuck up and in a secret Masonic webcomic or society... The stonecutters. It's cutters. not a comic. Well, the, the idea is that a lot of his comics They're, are yeah. not traditional. Yeah. Things. Like, it, it changes because it's based off of whatever... This needs to be, or this. Yeah. So it could be. It's fun. It's great to read. It is. And it's they good shit on the guy because he's better than them right now in the 
internet dick measuring contest of how big is your site. That's, it happens. Yes. I will hands down just blurt that one. He is in it. To be quite entirely. But, but, the, but the other thing is, but the other thing is that like, not only did they they declare him not a comic, but they were offended that anyone would consider him to be doing a comic, and that if you if you were one of those people, that you didn't understand comics and fuck you, and that's the part of the argument that always fell down for me because like, you know, yeah, it, I mean it's a, it's a question of semantics at that point. Yeah, you know? And you know what's funny is that you got the these people probably also uh, uh, what's it Scott McCloud, you know, where he's like the envious thing talking about, you know, they worship the ground he walks on. Yeah, yeah, yet, yeah. You know, yeah. you got oatmeal going in those directions, taking yeah. those chances. McLeod would definitely and consider and that. And then they're like, oh, well, you know, yeah. do as I say, not as I do, you yeah. know. Because the thing is, is, how many million people use the internet? And we're talking about webcomics being big when we hit like 30,000 a day. And that's just not big. It, like, it is such a small number. It's a, it's a sustainable number. Oh, Steve. What? Yeah. I know you're past 30 right now, right? Yeah, I'm 34. Aww. My birthday is in October. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck you. <laughs> okay, the other thing that I'm really hating is the, the, the kid comicers. I'm not even talking like the five-year-old or now six-year-old who writes Axe Cop. I'm talking about like the 18-year-old that's just way too fucking talented, just showing up like, oh, look at me, writing and drawing and being funny and relevant. Oh, I hate those Screw jerks. Screw you, kid. I, I don't Get a job. I hate those jerks. I don't like the people who come out there, they throw something out there, and then think they're going to make millions off of it, yet they put no effort into oh, it. I and don't stuff. care about those guys. But no, because to me, it's like, it's like, look, man, at one time, I tried. I don't try anymore, but at one time, <laughs> I tried. The fire used to burn. It's yeah. kind of a coal now. Yeah. I'm just milking things now. You know, come on. Yeah, there does there does seem to be kind of this um, air of entitlement for some of the, the newer comicers coming up that, like, I did this thing. You should fucking love it. And if you don't like it, fuck you. I'm leaving. Uh, I like to remember there was an article about uh, syndicated comics that was going off about whenever there was a feature on Jim Davis and it mentioned how much he made per year, the number of submissions to become a syndicated comic strip would uh, go up tenfold the next month. Because everyone was like, well, I can do this. And they would send in their great syndicated submission. And they don't realize Jim Davis was like grinding it for like 10 years. No, no, no. Jim Davis is a genius. You dislike him or not, there was an article and it talked about his formula and what he planned and how he did it. And it was like, it was all planned. It's like, okay, well, there's Snoopy. I'm going to do a cat one. And all this stuff and how he had it planned and marketing was in his plan. And he knew all this. And he didn't go in there to try to create like, you know, it wasn't like, oh, I've got this desire to make a comic about a, a cat that likes lasagna. He was like, okay, what, is it, what will sell? What will I do here? I'm going to quit drawing now because I can make more money doing this. I mean, yeah. he had a plan. It was so all business. He doesn't so even draw this thing. Anymore. If he were born today, he'd look at it and say, okay, I'm going to make a video game webcomic. Right. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dude, those things are a dime a dozen and crap. <laughs> yeah. You don't have enough readers in this audience to be offended at me, Dude, man. I don't get offended. <laughs> I don't want right, readers what, to be offended here's at what, me for a second. Hmm? Do we have any here, Well, if you're a fan of his, no, you don't. No, see, here's the thing. <laughs> no, I, I see, I told, uh, told you earlier, one thing that bothers me is that if you're going to complain, like uh, with the blogs where people complain about the comics, I don't have a problem with that. Go right ahead. Say whatever you want. I am completely open with that. But if you have your own comic... And you're going to bitch about other people's comic. At least have, laugh, be willing to say, "This comic sucks. Mine sucks as well. But this is right. what's wrong with this one. Right. Right. Don't just try to act like you're, you know. Because to me, it's like, well, if you know why this one sucks, then why aren't you fixing your own? Yeah, exactly. That's my whole thing. I really don't. I mean, dude, I'm so. I get a kick if I piss people off on the internet. I'm laughing. I was like, oh man, look at this one. This is funny. You know, I will. I'll call my wife. I'm like, hey, guess what? This guy called me an asshole. He's like, it's like, let me read your whole thing, and I'll read it to her and stuff. <laughs> I was like, guess what? I'm a male chauvinist pig. I was like, oh yeah, and I start reading this stuff. Do you? And do you, do you uh, oh, sorry. No, that's cool, man. I'm just insulting myself. Go ahead. All right, cool. yeah, I, I thought you had dug enough of a hole. Uh, <laughs> okay. You guys ever get the email of uh, the detailed explanation as to why somebody is no longer going to read your comic? Mm, not no. yet. I gotta. I'm looking forward to it. 
Dude, I got a hate mail for dueling my first strip. First strip? Uh, Dude! Because people were telling me. I was me, reading you from the beginning, but now. No, it was. No more. <laughs> no, the, the first strip I had, um, it was. Um, yeah, Luigi had to go to the um, doctors um, because his ass was hurting, and they found out that he was, you know, put Sonic inside his ass, you know, the whole felching type thing, and explain nice. why this isn't a good idea. And then some lady I comes back how to me. classy your comic is. Yes! <laughs> The upper class now, but um, <laughs> so this lady comes back. She goes, "This is so offensive, blah blah blah." And he goes, "Why in the world would Luigi shove Sonic in his ass?" And and I was like, "Wow, this is great." My first hate mail. So I go back. It's like it's called felching. Ask your husband. And then I said, <laughs> <laughs> "And but to me, As it's like this is married." Yeah. But dude, it's like but when I did the outer circle, you know, nine hundred and fifty strips basically, and I only ever almost got one hate mail. And it was when I did a comic about ADD. Oh, wow. And this person telling me that ADD is real, you shouldn't be doing this, blah, 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 blah. But I really like your comic, and I think that you did a good job on it. So, <laughs> either, so either he's... That's not hate mail. So it's either he has ADD, and he switched track halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> that fucker didn't commit. Or, I mean, it, or it was a joke, and I was like, oh, that's cool, man. You know, I appreciate that. Yeah. The, the only time I've ever gotten hate mail was for something I wrote in the blog. And uh, I depublished it because I'm a pussy. Oh, dude. I know. I, 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 um, I called out U Street. If, if anyone lives in the area, I was saying that like U Street is getting gentrified because mm -hmm. it was it was half of a, it was half a review of the ramen shop. I was like, this ramen place is awesome. If you go to U Street, it's gentrified. So you know, and people in the neighborhood were like, "Fuck you, man! It's not getting gentrified." Blah 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 blah. And they're telling me all these reasons why. You know, they were like. Oh, don't you like your community getting you know uplifted and all this stuff? And I was like, I, I didn't want to deal with it anymore, so I, I depublished that thing. Well, who was it on? Which on what site? Uh, Yellow Barrel. Dude, just if you, if you got a problem with that, just block it. Yeah. I mean, I will only the only time I ever stop like if I will delete certain comments, but it really has to be somebody just coming on there and completely just saying something like you know you suck something or insulting somebody on there but if they come on there and they explain to me why i suck i'm gonna keep it on there man oh like, i kept the comments on i just oh, yeah. depublished my post because but to me it's like look if you can justify why something's going go right ahead man. yeah and the audience will correct themselves if somebody's going out there the readers will come in there and stuff like uh, i got a lot of slack for the the portal abortion one. Oh yeah that was funny. Great comic, man. I liked it. You know, doctor checking out a woman, a gynecologist looks in there, is like, well, you're about um, nine weeks pregnant, pulls out a portal gun, shoots in her, shoots in the dumpster outside, and he goes, well, not anymore. And uh, you all laughed. Yeah. And we have video to, re to record this shit. Yeah. Terrible, so, terrible people. <laughs> so I got people, you know, they start complaining, going, oh, you're, you've gone too low, too low ground. And I was going to respond, like, man, you haven't read the archives. I've gone lower. But I'm going through this. But then people, I was like, oh, dude, nobody's defending me. It's like, I'm going down far. It's like, man, do I need to say something? And all of a sudden, bam, like the rest of yeah. them were people coming to my defense. I was yeah. Like, That's cool. And I was like, but then also I looked, it's like, you know, I mean, my Facebook likes are about like 900 on it. I'm like, <laughs> apparently people like this. Facebook so. loves abortion. So it's like, you gotta, I was getting traffic. People were like, you know, you know, I was like, all right, whatever, you know, I'm cool with that, you know, but you get, but. I was upsetting people, so that was that makes me happy. Yeah, it's like that's how I connect with people by like pissing them off. Uh, the one that just pissed me off. It was I had that I had a guy send in. It was the uh, well, I'm quitting. I've uh, over the past month of reading your comic, I haven't laughed once. And he he had been reading longer than that, and like you're just that whole month of updates, he wasn't digging it, and. It was a case of, and I actually got so pissed off, I actually looked back at the last month, and this is what pissed me off the most. That was the period of time where we were finishing off the Monster Alphabet, and we like went through a whole week and a half of the Monster Alphabet. I remember that, yeah. The Monster Alphabet doesn't have a single joke in it. It was just an idea that we had, and we asked permission, and we were like, hey, is it cool if we're not funny like one day a week? Like, well, you know, Wednesday, Friday, horrible puns and you can groan and feel bad about them later but just give me Mondays for like 26 weeks and we basically got towards the end we realized that we needed to like really quickly crank them out to hit a deadline for them and so we like said okay we're just we got to blank out this whole week it's going to be just a whole week of not funny but you know you guys are enjoying the monster alphabet so go with that so basically like half the comics that were pissing him off and like not making him laugh they weren't even designed to make people laugh 
The other half, they just sucked because I was having a rough month of writing <laughs> stuff. I mean, I mean, come on. You know, like, sometimes you just got to crap it They're out. not all like, winners. You know, put a Smurf here and a Pillsbury Doughboy. Oh, I rhyme that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've had better months since then. But yeah. So you may have been right, but not right enough to, like, tell me. Well, apparently you upset him enough. Yeah. Yes, yes. Your lack of funny was enough yeah. to break him. See, I just hope that nobody realizes that I don't give a shit because <laughs> then they'll like stop getting angry and then, then it's ruined for me. It's like, oh, no, that's okay. No, no, it's not okay. <laughs> that's okay, just well, his entire bio. I don't know. 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 I don't you should ask if we have questions. Now. Yes. Yeah, uh, sure. Are there any questions, uh, particular people you wish us to hate Acting upon? Like I'm like running this. Tell us about the people you know that are part of that site. Scott Kurtz. He counts for like seven people. Dude's you. <laughs> um, Steve Gutenberg, um, Lenny, um, <laughs> Carl are both members. So Mr. it's Mr. Burns. Burns. <sighs> Who else? I like how we <laughs> opened it with a premise that we're not naming names. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wait, uh, we, we have, have one in the front and one in the back. We'll do the front first. Yeah. Right. I was just going to ask, what do you guys feel about sites that review web comics and spend all their time, oh. no, no, no. All their time just <laughs> review, like, XKCD sucks. It's not really a view because it's going in there no matter what. They're just running the XKCD sucks. Hmm. Uh, yeah, the XKCD sucks. I really, like, yeah, good job, buddy. You know, guy's going through a hard, painful time, and, like, his uh, fiance is going through some breast cancer. Way to, you know, keep shitting on that guy. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. it's... In particular, I've got my own piece. Well, I, I don't understand. I, I mean, I, I understand movie reviews and things like that, but, like, because those are things you pay for, but... No, I, no, I think... You, I, no, no, no. I'm okay with reviewing it, but if you're reviewing a comic and you're building it off of a site where it's always going to be a negative review, you're not reviewing something. No. It's as yeah. simple as it gets. Now, your webcomic is bad and you should feel bad. Oh, hell yeah, I was part of that. I hated that. I thought that was true. <laughs> yeah. I don't feel bad. <laughs> were, were you part of the first coming or the second? Dude, I was the first one. I was the one that told uh, Brian about that um, to make it's like an idea for a shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then he made the shirt. I was like, dude, I didn't wait. Wait, what? <laughs> like, I came up with that idea. No, Brian came up with that idea. Oh. Brian idea. I was like, all right, whatever, man. Your shirt sucks and you should feel bad. You know? So, I don't know. I, I feel like some of the review sites, I, I think if they have something interesting to add to the conversation, then there's a validity to it. But Like, there's a way to do a critique. Yeah, you have to I'm, find out what are they doing right, what are they doing wrong. Yeah. Sometimes, yes, they're doing something horribly wrong. But then at the same time, this is the weird thing about webcomics is I think you need to realize there are two types of webcomicers. There's the hobbyist and the professional. And... I don't know if you really should crap on the hobbyist. It's like they're doing it for fun. No, but it, you also have to take into consideration, too, that um, with web comics, just like comic books, but in like different ways, I mean, these are just because you like one doesn't mean that you're that genre. You know, yeah, I mean, right, you right. should, they fall into different categories. It's like, well, okay, I mean, this it's the motive of the person putting it out, yeah. is what I'm saying. I yeah. mean, dude, there's. And, like, I'm a professional webcomiker, so yeah, go ahead, review my site. Like, I can take it. Like, the guy that set the send-off to me and said, you know, done, that comment is up on my site. Because, you know, if people are going to tell me I'm awesome, then I have to leave the, the dickhead that yeah. thinks that I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. It, admittedly, the artist forced me to, oh, but demanded that I leave that up there. Like, <laughs> wear that. But... As long, I mean, I'm I'm all for. I mean, you want to make legitimate opinions, and you want to have your blog, and that, that's cool, man. I'm there. It's gonna happen. It's like uh, why you have an RSS feed, why you control it. You'd rather people don't go through your RSS feed to visit your site because you really don't gain anything from it. But in the same regards, if you don't build it, somebody else is gonna build right. it. So you might as well just at least you're in control, and you know. So it, I look at that, man. Somebody's gonna bitch, and somebody's going to do that. So that's cool. You know, yeah. I, you get traffic one way or another. Yeah. Yeah. So. Got a question from the back row there. Uh, yeah. Do I? Oh, 
thoughts on Bobby Crosby, the Stills NHL Nash? hockey player? No, that's Sydney. Stills and Nash? More Wait, well, hold on. We're talking about um, uh, Keen Spot. Yeah. Oh, Keen. Oh. What about his brother? I know. I know. He does I know. have Clearly a reputation. Not the <laughs> okay. He does have a reputation, and he's crossed a lot of people. But all of us have never done Keen Spot, no. so we've never personally. I was on Keen Space. Oh wow! Why? Because wait, wait, wait. Was that was that uh, your first ever comedy? Yes. Wow, that was a terrible comic. Yes, it was <laughs> awful. It was totally weeaboo. <laughs> I used to own Drunk Duck. Oh, no, I, didn't, I can't back. Back. So yeah, yeah, like all the stuff that he did, sort of, we missed it. That's never so, happened to us. Yeah, so I'm we, sorry. we don't care. Yeah, I hear he's a dick. Yeah. Now, if you want to oh. talk about Bill Cosby, we've got some uh, words to throw down. Fucking oh, Jello geez, man. man. Rasm. Did somebody else have a question? Ass. I think there was a green. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Not enough dicks. <laughs> yeah. Before yeah. or after Lance showed up. Yeah. Uh, well, there's a there's a uh, very strong contingent that wants me to do a porn comic. Oh yeah, I would. Dude, I've, you gotta. I was talking with uh, Mookie about this. What you do is you draw the parts that are implied, <laughs> and then you sell them at cons. Ah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> money. I'm actually trying to think of an answer to that, and I got nothing. Well, um, I. I I got my the felching oh, no, no, one. Uh, um, yeah, the felching one is a good one. But man, but. dude, I get they like they've mellowed out, man. They're, yeah. not, they're not where they were before. They kind of well, there are a couple of people who hated my guest strip. Really, on mine? Yeah. <laughs> Did they they post on mine? Yeah. That? Or no, maybe they posted on uh, Kotaku or something like that. It's dude, actually, you got, uh, you got, I think it showed up on like Joystick too, didn't it? Yeah, yeah dude, that That's thing actually, did well. It was on Reddit as well. Cool. Joystick's little uh, weekly webcomics roundup that they do. Uh, that's probably where I get the weirdest hate on me because for some reason, that guy who put the guys who put that together and they pick things, they never nail cheese when it's actually doing a good joke. <laughs> there, there's some lame ones in there, and every time I do a lame video game one, that's the one they grab that week. And so I always have like two percent of the vote for Hello with Cheese. I'm like, really? Duh. Oh, dude, you want to hear? hear um, this isn't complaining. Okay. Um, Griffin, or actually, kind of Griffin McElroy. Uh, he used to do it after yeah. uh, Ross Miller. Um, Ross Miller was awesome. Um, if I ever do a dueling analogs book, Ross Miller will write the forward. Nice. Marty. Um, but Griffin McElroy, uh, um, he when he took over. Um, he just took dueling out of the mix. He was like, man, this comic sucks. I was like, yeah, but it should still be in it. It's like, Arr, no. So I got in it one week, and it was for my Portal Tetris comic. Uh -huh. And then at the same time, I was in it for Omaki Theater for my uh, Portal comic. But if there, it's, you know, because it, since my name's not on it, it's like they're both in there. So they didn't know. So I was like, man, you know, for somebody who doesn't never puts me in there, now you put me in there twice. It's like, suck on that, McElroy. <laughs> There was a, another case where I really hated that situation where they posted one of your comics and it was my guest comic. Aww. Which, wait, hold on. Like, uh, and I think it actually won that week. Was it the, <laughs> the one where you gave me the idea? Uh, it was either, I don't think it was the one where I gave you the straight up idea. I think it was one that we actually drew for you. Yeah. Because I know that the, um, the I one, because we were at SPX, remember that one? Because I named that strip, uh, um, hey Dern, it's me, Ernest. Yeah. Um, and uh, with the uh, it was uh, Mario. Uh, Mario was sleeping with the companion cube, and like one of the question mark cubes is walking in the door and like giving him that you bastard. It's because, not what you, you know, think. It's not what you think, <laughs> dude. That was awesome. I got a lot of traffic off of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like this. This is the weirdest thing to hate on. It's like, yeah, you know, I got you a great guest comic, which. The internet freaking loves. And yeah. Well, a lot of it too but is yeah. where, like, because uh, Ross gives me crap about that when he does a guest strip, because then it'll, like, it's like, but it's the people who are gonna pass it around. It's like, it's like you can create a great comic, but the, it's the people, like, the people who are reading it, seeing it here, are the ones that are gonna send it out there. Yeah. Like, yeah. you can't control stumble upon anybody who tells you that you can, like, try to manipulate. You can't do that. No. They're liars. 
the, um, stumble upon the people have to do it themselves. Yeah. yeah. And um, the people who are reading it have to get there and they have to pass it out. You and actually, followers. you actually can buy stumbles. You can, but, but there it's, it's not completely undervalued. No. Like yeah. there's, well, it's overvalued. There's no reason to ever. Like, it's this weird thing that they have where you can buy viral traffic, but it doesn't work that way because viral traffic only works as if it's good and it's catching. You know. Yeah. yeah. So. I never really bothered to buy that. I experimented with it once. You know, didn't inhale. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are there any other questions? Worst con experiences? Game Expo. Um, <laughs> it is so bad, it has. Did you guys do it too? Good. <laughs> Got the background so, there. so this convention okay. we were told was in the greater Philadelphia area. No, no, no. We were told in Philly. Right. We were told in Philly. Uh, we were told it that it Philly. was going to be comparable to, you know, it's a gaming show. It's going to be like E3 or it's going to be like Penny Arcade Expo, similar to that. So we ran a van and we're driving up there and we're following the map to where it's going and we're realizing that, you know, like we're driving up to Philly and now we're doing this all of a sudden to keep on the map. There's Philly, oh fuck. And we're looking down and realizing, okay, so it's not really in Philly, okay. We're driving through these roads, cows everywhere at this point. You know, you, you can smell the bullshit, <laughs> literally. And we drive past a place that is called the, the dump. dump. <laughs> Apparently not actually a dump. It was a uh, flea market. It's, it's a furniture store. Ah. It's a chain, actually. So you're actually yeah, we got those in the dump. Ah. Huh? And we got those. you're familiar with the dump, right? Yeah, yeah. Haynes. Okay. Oh, dump. <laughs> Great. So on the right, there's the dump. To the left is the sewage treatment plant. Now, I'd like to tell you. I'd love to tell you that the sewage treatment plant is like some trendy nightclub or something. No, it's the sewage. It's the pile of shit. So... Right in between, there's this big white barn-like place, which and we found out later was in the middle. No, no, and it we're was looking a, right it, at it. it was oh, no, no, I, I got it. Okay. okay. So we're looking at this big ass barn, and I look up in the A of the barn and see really barely there is the the Greater Philadelphia Area Expo Center, and we're like, oh shit, this is actually it. So we try to find the front door. And there's like a quasi antiques roadshow going on in the front. And we're actually in the back of this place. As we do this show, we start to find out later it was a fucking locker factory that had gotten converted into the Greater Philadelphia Area Expo Center. Just. What are you up to over there? Huh? Visual aids? Okay. <laughs> Don't. <Yeah. laughs> it was in a freaking locker factory. What's yes. That? Thirty thousand people. <laughs> so these the geniuses of this convention booked us to perform at ten yes. in the morning. Care to guess what hour? Oh, ten in the morning, Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Care to guess what hour this convention opened? Ten in the morning. You can't actually do a live show for an audience the instant the audience is supposed to walk through. Oh, it the was door. worse because on Sunday they opened at 11 and we were oh, still yeah. scheduled at 10. Oh, this, I, yeah. It's amazing that I'm trying to repress something about this. Yeah. The weird thing is, is you're walking around a show like this and people are seriously believing that it's like one of the greatest show experiences ever. Like, some people got to meet Yahtzee, the guy who does zero punctuation. Uh, are you guys fans of the Guild? Well, imagine getting to meet all the Guild sans Felicia Day. Right. And now Will Wheaton. He wasn't on the Guild at that point. Oh, so right. they got all this amazing access. Get to meet all these people. Get, you know, great seats to a super art fight. Oh, really? Everybody else is like, oh, God, what the hell am I doing here? I'm in a locker factory in between a pile of shit and the dump. It's just, it was hands down the worst show ever. And so every time we say Game Expo... We've got our hand signal for it. It's it's a it's a special battle scar. It, I also have no problem like normally, it, whenever I do a show, you'll never catch me saying anything publicly bad about a convention, because there's always the potential that that convention can get better. And on, I'm always the optimist. Well, where are you going? Hustle it. I don't feel like it. Hey, <laughs> 
Oh, oh, oh okay. Oh shit, that means we're done. Oh. Yeah. Well, there's nothing going on here afterwards. Oh. This is it. We're just in here. But I need to get dinner. Oh, you Doctor Who? All right, everybody, go to Cosplay Burlesque. Stay after, and be sure to watch Super Art Fight Unleashed, where dude, Jamie's coming back. We will. What? He's coming back. He's coming back. Yeah, I told him that nothing was going on in here, so we could.